There's a Muslim social media figure uh, being accused of anti-Semitism in the U.S. Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, it's not someone that I actually uh, follow or uh, someone who, who interests me particularly, to be honest. But obviously this is farcical. I mean, uh, if a Muslim in the West uh, is genuinely anti-Semitic, it just means uh, that that Muslim has successfully assimilated uh, to Western culture. I mean, the West invented it. The West invented anti-Semitism. I mean, previous instances uh, in history of anti-Jewish persecution were actually persecution by uh, polytheists against monotheists. The fact that those monotheists were Jewish uh, was just incidental. It wasn't. It wasn't based on them being Jewish. It was based on them being monotheist. But it was the West uh, who invented specifically anti-Jewish hatred and anti-Jewish per, uh, Jewish persecution. That's a distinctly European pathology. I mean, it has nothing to do with Muslims. It has nothing to do with Arabs or anyone else. That's a that's a Western thing. So if a if a, if a Muslim in America or a Muslim in Europe is actually genuinely anti-Jewish, uh, you know, if he, if he believes in, say, those conspiracy theories about the Jews or, or, or harbors, you know, irrational hatred or what have you for the Jewish people, uh, well, then that is a Muslim who has been successfully and thoroughly westernized, which I thought is what you all wanted. I thought, I, I thought you wanted Muslims to assimilate, right? I mean, these views are hard-drived into Western white supremacist ideology. You know, the obsession with the Rothschilds and so on. You know, the idea that Jews run the world and all of these types of things. All of these ideas are basic Nazi propaganda, but the Nazis used these tropes because they already existed in the society and they were already believed by the population. They didn't invent the idea. That, that's something that's been in Europe for a long time. These aren't Muslim views by any stretch of the imagination. They're not Islamic views. They're your views. So all you're doing... Uh, when you accuse someone of anti-Semitism, all you're doing is accusing that person of being a Westerner, of thinking like a Westerner, you know, of having uh, aligned himself uh, with the fundamental biases of the West, particularly the, the, uh, the Christian fundamentalist right wing, though it's not exclusive to them by any means. I mean, didn't Joe Biden say uh, that if there wasn't an Israel, then th that the U.S. would have to make one? If there wasn't an Israel, America would have to make one? Why? Because you don't want Jewish people in your country. You want them elsewhere. You know, being born and raised in the United States or in the uh, UK or in France or in Germany or wherever else, uh, being a citizen of, uh, of those countries, a citizen of the country you were born in, somehow uh, that doesn't make those countries their homeland. Why? Because you just don't accept them. Simple. That's anti-Semitism. That's anti-Jewish. I mean, okay, you have laws against anti-Semitism, which inaccurately is used to mean anti-Jewish, even though most Jews today aren't actually Semites, but whatever. You know, you have uh, laws in your countries against uh, specifically anti-Jewish hate because you know what you're like and you know what you do. You don't make laws prohibiting things that people don't do. You make laws prohibiting things that people do. So you know perfectly well that you people are prone. Uh, to anti-Jewish hatred and persecution. You know that's a habit of yours. It's one of the characteristics of your society. And of course, as I said, uh, it is undeniably, it's undeniably the logic uh, behind non-Jewish support for Zionism. Non-Jewish support for Zionism uh, is nothing but a declaration by non-Jews that Jews do not belong in their countries and that Jews will not be safe in their countries. That's what non-Jewish support for Zionism means. That's what you're saying. It's saying that uh, citizenship for Jews in the West is invalid. I'm not sure how much more anti-Jewish you can possibly be. And it's so conspicuous, you know? It's so conspicuous, this pretense of sensitivity, this very selective outrage uh, specifically about anti-Jewish sentiment. While you have politicians in Washington who just the other day were openly calling for dropping nuclear bombs on Gaza, while the U.S. keeps reloading Israel's American weapons to continue the genocide against the Palestinian people. And you want me to believe that you're offended by prejudice? 
prejudice and hateful violence are definitive Western traits. It's what defines your whole so-called civilization. I mean, honestly, why do you think that no one knows your history? You're, you really act like you think no one knows your history. Why do you think that your victims don't know their own history with you? I mean, let's be honest. It's not actually just Gaza. It's not just Gaza. You've been carrying out uh, a genocide against Muslims for decades. And we're just your latest victims. If you begin uh, at the first Gulf War in the, in the early 90s, 1991, 1992, until today, you know, until now, so roughly about, about 30 year period, 30 to 35 years or so, you killed, by most estimates, around 5 to 6 million Muslims around the world, directly and indirectly, whether it's by uh, bombs or by sanctions or by imposed famine, by illness and so on. You killed five to six million Muslims. Okay, that's genocide. That's a 30 to 40 year long Holocaust. We don't have uh, the final tally on uh, all of the deaths because you're still doing it. The American Holocaust against Muslims is ongoing. Like I said, you use direct and indirect means. You use proxies like Israel, for example. You use drones. You use economic blockades and so on. You inflict uh, deprivation leading to death in Muslim country after Muslim country. Do you think we didn't notice? I mean, everyone agrees that you committed a genocide uh, against the Native Americans, right? Okay. You did it to them the same way, the same way that you're doing it to us, directly and indirectly, by means of violence, by means of uh, illness, viruses, and so on, by means of deprivation, by means of famine, uh, displacement to the point of death. Same as now. Over the course of decades, same as now. Do you think we don't know it? Everyone knows it. You think the whole world looks up to you? No. Everyone in the world, when we talk about the West, when we talk about America, we're always asking, what's wrong with them? What's wrong with those people? You know? In fact, we're not even asking that anymore, to be honest. To tell the truth, we're not even asking that anymore. We stopped trying to figure out what's actually wrong with you. And we've just concluded that something is very, very wrong with you, and now everyone is just trying to get away from you. I mean, do you, do you even have any idea how you look when you accuse anyone of anything, no matter what it is? Because no matter what it is, it's always going to be less uh, and less grievous and less harmful and less severe than what you've already done and what you're proud of having done, and in fact, what you're doing right now. You can't accuse anyone of anything. And you know, seriously, Westerners will say, uh, you know, let's leave the past in the past. Let's leave the past behind us and focus on the future. You know, what's done is done. Let's just move forward. I mean, subhanAllah. Never mind how, how, how criminally obnoxious and dismissive that attitude is in terms of justice for your victims. Forget about that. Can you imagine uh, trying to make that your legal defense in court? You know, a serial killer in court saying uh, as his defense uh, before the judge. Well, you know, Your Honor, what happened happened. I think everyone should just move on. The defense rests. Well, lucky you're not a civilization. You're a satire of a civilization. But the thing is, okay, maybe uh, it's conceivable. Maybe the world would be willing uh, to let bygones be bygones, let the past be in the past. But you never stop doing it. Like I said, you're carrying out an ongoing decades-long holocaust against the Muslims worldwide. Like what? You stab me in the chest, and then you pull the knife out, and in that moment, you tell me to forget uh, about the, the, the stab wound that you just inflicted. It's ancient history, and you're a changed man. Right before you stab me again. Wallahi, that's insane. You know, all the Muslims that you regard uh, as extremists, all the ones that you accuse of being extremists and so on, they're extremists because of you. And I don't mean that, uh, that your violence and terror in the Muslim world is what made them uh, extremists. No. I mean their extremism itself smacks of Western thinking. They think of Islam uh, the same way that you think of Islam. That's the level of their understanding. They're as ignorant about Islam as you are, and in the same way that you are. And they approach conflict the same way that you approach conflict. Their whole mentality... Uh, is a replica of Western thinking.
yes, so-called extremist Muslims are the most westernized Muslims there are. Because they're the most like you. They think like you. They act like you. And they hate like you. And you know, really, uh, it's ironic. But it's just like it's just like Zionists. You know, that whole movement, that whole uh, anti-Judaic, mostly atheistic movement, that secular movement of Zionism, was informed uh, by European Jews who wanted to be like you too. It's the same thing. They wanted to stop being bullied by you. And they wanted to become bullies themselves. You know, these were the, the, the original Zionist Jews. They thought that Judaism made Jews too soft. It made them too acquiescent. It made them too patient uh, with persecution. So they wanted to act like uh, savage, violent Westerners, just like you. They wanted to act like the people who were persecuting them. And it's the same with these extremist type Muslims. They didn't learn about uh, jihad from Islamic jurisprudence. They learned about it from Rambo. They learned about it from your own crackhead-like addiction to violence. They're nothing but uh, Muslim gangbangers, wannabe gangsters, just like the Zionists and just like you. Meanwhile, Muslims who are, are actually deeply rooted in Islam, deeply rooted in Islamic knowledge, they have sabr, they have patience, they have wisdom, they have restraint, they have self-control, endurance, and resilience, and they have reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not competing in the dumpster fire Olympics to see if we can out-savage you. We're not trying to outdo you in uh, being humiliatingly reprehensible. We've been around for a long time. Muslims have been around for a long time. And we've seen violent, reprehensible empires come and go. And you're uh, more violent and you're more reprehensible than most of those. So all that means is you're going to be gone even sooner. We understand uh, that in the broader scope of history, you're doing nothing uh, but attack us with an ice pick while we're a glacier. There's only one way that this is going to go, and it's not your way. But going back to your question, you should understand, uh, really, how embarrassing it is. Embarrassing to yourselves when you accuse anyone uh, of anti-Semitism or anti-Jewish hatred uh, or any other kind of degenerate bigotry. When you're the ones who taught degenerate bigotry to the world. So all you're doing when you accuse someone else uh, of doing that is giving them acknowledgement of being a good student of the West. When you call someone an extremist or what have you, anti-Semite, anti-Jewish, bigot or what have you, or you say that they're hateful or any of that sort of thing, all you're doing is you're just giving them uh, a certificate uh, as a graduate of Western so-called civilization.